What is up, people? We're going to take a look at this LED bulb here today. It's one that has failed on me. And this is in uh, Fate uh, Electric. I don't actually even know how to pronounce it. Is it Fiat? Fate? Oh, whatever. Fate Electric. It's an 8.8-watt uh, 8 .8 uh, LED bulb. And this is one that we had on the inside of this fixture that we have in one of our bathrooms. It's a fixture with like uh, three bulbs. I was brushing my teeth one morning and this one here kind of sat in the uh, center position and it flickered twice. Like it shut off, came back, shut off and then came back and then it shut off again and it started smoking. So I immediately unscrewed it and uh, just kind of set it aside and the smoke stunk. Like it smelled bad. So I thought we'd uh, tear it open today, see what's uh, going on inside of it. I promise this is probably going to be a short video, but <laughs> judging by the way things are going lately where we start going a little too in depth with some of this stuff, I make no promises. So that looks like the model number right there. It's a CEO M60. I don't know what that 350 and the other six there mean. 120 volt AC, 60 hertz, 90 milliamp, yada, yada, yada. Uh, getting inside of this should not be difficult, doesn't look like. Looks like we can probably just pry up on here. And this is most likely they're not going to be like a destructive teardown. So I'm not planning on repairing this or anything like that. So I've got a uh, sort of a DIY spudging tool here that I've made. Let's see if we can pop this cap here off because I think that's what's going to pop off. And it feels like it might be adhered. But there it goes. So nothing on there looks burnt and it looks like this board is just held in there with a couple screws and then it's got a connector in the middle there where the pins just kind of protrude through from the bottom so let's go ahead and take those screws out. whoa pff, i can already smell it again <laughs> yeah it stinks okay here's a screwdriver these are little short screws looks like they're threaded into uh an aluminum base down there it looks like okay that just pops out it's got heat sink compound, so that is uh, to keep it cool there. And inside, it doesn't look like anything is potted. So that's kind of cool. I was kind of worried that it was going to be all potted in there. So that's just a little ring of LEDs. Looks like we've got, what, 12? No, 14. Okay, this part here, I'm not sure how this is going to come out. I kind of doubt we're going to be able to spudge it out. Oh, that's spudging out as well. <laughs> It's a little easier than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like, we're going to have to go uh, crazy violent on this. So that there just looks like a little heat sink, uh, kind of a bell shape. Oh, well, eh, sort of a bell shape, kind of cupped or like a bowl. So it helps dissipate some of the heat away from the uh, actual diodes. And here's where we're going to find what caused that stink. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. I already see it. I'm sure there's a wire going down towards the the end uh, connect and connector here that is probably what's holding it there from coming apart. Can't tell exactly how it's uh held in there, so let me see if maybe I can like lift this up. Man, this thing's going like way easier than I thought it was going to. That's it right there. Okay, came out a little bit more. But there's still another wire holding it. That's gonna be Going to the uh, screw base right here. Oh, there it goes. So that was also just sort of like friction fit in there. So this is not even soldered. That one wasn't soldered either. It looks like it was just uh, pinched in between the plastic right there and the, the pin itself. So those are out. Just lift this out like that. Board drops out. That's the inside. Oh, so, okay. So this is lined with uh, aluminum also. So the entire base there, this whole thing here acts as a heat sink. And that would probably come off if I like scrape off all this sealant. That's like around here. Ugh, you can see right there where it's sputtered. Now this base enclosure, I thought that aluminum uh, cup inside of there was going to be able to just like slide out, but it's actually part of the, the entire thing. So the aluminum has actually been molded into it. As you can see there, when I break that apart, it's uh, covering both sides of the, or it's uh, like on the in, in the middle of right there in between the, where this has been molded. That little end button, it's got some little barbs there and that's uh, kind of what's used to uh, like hold it in place. You can kind of see right there how there's a little bit of a, 
kind of a groove like notched into it and i think that's uh, where the wire was so it just sort of like smashed on it a little bit so let's uh take a close look here at this board oh that chip right there is fried and look at the other side <laughs> that metal film cap totally ruptured and burst so these right here i thought they were fuses they're not they're resistors or they're probably like resistive fuses so that could be it too now this here, I thought it was going to be like a small transformer, but it actually looks like it's just a uh, choke of sorts. Got a large capacitor right there. And I bet you already know where this is going. <laughs> yes, let's go ahead and make up a schematic for it. Before we get into the schematic, though, let's take a really close look at the board itself. So, yeah, see these uh, resistors here? Completely fried, and it looks like they were coated with a, uh, a tube of uh, maybe like heat shrink just to kind of... Uh, keep them uh, a little protected there. Maybe they were covering like the, the pins here as well. That film capacitor right there. Let me focus on that a bit. It's totally burst. Maybe that's what uh, smelled so bad. See how it's all fried on here. There's these resistors here that is uh, looks like it says five one one. So those are probably yeah those are probably like uh, five hundred and ten ohm resistors and they're in parallel. Two hundred fifty five ohms total. Got a diode there, then a resistor. Those are the pins that are going out to the, the OLED board. Some other stuff there that's not populated. There's that chip. I don't know if that's the number there. It looks like 16937-30BA. Uh, we'll have to look that up and see what information I can find. A little rectifier there. It's in uh, MB10S, looks like. And yeah, there's like a few other things here that are not populated, like that resistor there. And that's uh, an inductor. It looks like it'd be parallel with that inductor. Maybe uh, some uh, boards use the resistor instead of the inductor or something. Got some other stuff there. Looks like uh, that's a varistor. A couple more uh, film caps right there. You can see where the... You can see right there where the heat sink... Uh, or you can see right here where the heat shrink material kind of just sputtered all over these uh, capacitors. And this is that large capacitor right there. It looks like it's rated for 130 degrees C. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen one that high, actually, myself. That's a uh, 220 microfarad cap, 63 volt. And it looks like that's a Topazcon or Topazcon branded cap. That's that little transformer looking thing, but. I'm saying that it's not a transformer because this pin right here doesn't actually have any uh, wiring going to it. And it's only got uh, three pins total. So it's got that pin right there. And then that pin and that pin. A little chunk of uh, that silicone stuff that sealed it. So it's only these two here that are actually doing anything. That one there is just for support so that it's not like wobbly or anything like that. I've got another little uh, disc cap right there. So that is the entire board right there. Let's see what we can come up with schematic-wise. We have got a schematic. So this one actually wasn't too hard to do, but I kind of cheated a little bit. Okay, I didn't really cheat, but it was pretty easy to find a uh, data sheet for this one. This is an, uh, the chip itself is an AL16937. It's a buck dimmable LED driver. And we see we've got a pinout right here. Uh, now, one thing you'll notice here that's kind of different from my schematic is that this is uh, numbered like 1 through 4, 5, 6. We skip 1 and then 7. However, in my schematic, uh, you see that I got a uh, block here and it goes all the way up to 8. So that's where I hooked up the uh, pin that goes out when on the uh, data sheet. It's uh, pin 7. And the, the only reason why that's different is because I don't have... Uh, I don't have like a the actual AL16937 uh, chip here in uh, uh, KiCad. So what I did is I just kind of made a generic 8-pin uh, block because I actually need a generic 8-pin block like this for another schematic that I was uh, doing for a, another video. So I figured if I just uh, make one uh, for a symbol here, I can reuse it in you know, whatever schematic I need where it's just like an 8-pin chip like this where uh, there's no actual uh, device available in the uh, libraries. And then there was this other uh, sheet or uh, document that I found that talks about, you know, a bit about what this uh, chip here does. And uh, this one here actually has a nicer looking schematic. So I was kind of using this, you know, like referencing it, uh, jumping back and forth. And it kind of helped me with the location of a lot of the parts. 
it just kind of made it easier to figure it all out but the connections were you know pretty easy to figure out from the board anyway so uh, overall the process just really was not that bad so let's take a look here and see what's uh, going on and then i'll talk about which uh cap capacitor was the one that that blew uh so we got our line coming in here uh this is going to be the 120 volts and like it says this uh circuit is dimmable so the chip there uh, you know takes care of like monitoring the the dc voltage uh that gets rectified here and then that's i guess how it figures out you know what to uh, how to dim these but so we've got these two um devices here labeled fr1 and fr2 those are those two uh, resistors that are just burnt to a crisp on the input and i have no idea what those even are supposed to be or anything so there's no label for those and they just go uh, straight into the uh, bridge rectifier the symbol that i used in the schematic here in, in keycad uh, does not match exactly what's on the board i just kind of picked one and then i labeled it with what's uh, the part number on the, on this actual device but the pin numbers themselves they don't match but it, it's not really all that important we just know that we got our positive going here we got our negative going here and uh, so after uh, it gets rectified there's a 100 nanofarad capacitor there that's a uh, it's a uh, one of those metal film caps and that one's totally fine uh, there is a varistor right here in between the the two rails and this varistor here is uh, basically for like transient suppression i looked up the number on it and that happens to be uh this uh, 7d271 there's no k in the package of the one i have here but i guess that's what it is so you see um it's a uh, for surge suppression it's got a fast response time high current handling yada 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 that component there looks totally fine on the board so after uh it gets rectified and it goes through those two components there is a small inductor i almost forgot to label these but i measured them i took them out of circuit both of the inductors and uh, the first one here measures about 2.2 millihenries it was like slightly under but i think it's probably supposed to be like 2.2 so that's probably just going to help with uh, filtering uh, the ac a little bit or some of the ripple and so after that in the schematic on the document uh, we see here that we've got this resistor in series with a capacitor and that's uh, wired in between the uh, positive and the negative rail and then we have another capacitor here that's all just by itself wired in um, parallel with the uh, the rails i just kind of drew it the opposite way except in the actual board here they have these two 510 ohm resistors wired in parallel and that goes to uh, this capacitor this 220 nanofarad cap and so they're just switched in my schematic but it, i mean whatever uh, so the capacitor that's uh, in parallel here, this is a 150 nanofarad capacitor, and both of those are metal film caps. And so as we go along, uh, pin number one of the, the chip here, that's the uh, VCC, and we can see that right here, pin one VCC. So that's where it's getting um, its positive voltage to function, and that's just made up by this resistor here. It's got this capacitor here as a like to stabilize that voltage. And then the positive kind of goes off. It goes to the the cathode of this. Uh, it, this is a fast diode here. It's labeled ES1J. I should probably move that over here a little bit. <laughs> okay, so, uh, and then it, it's in parallel also with this, uh, or it's connected to one side of this uh, 150K resistor, which is connected in parallel to this 220 microfarad capacitor. That was that huge yellow, yellow one that we saw. So this is uh, looking like it's just a, a bleeder resistor for that big capacitor. The positive goes directly to the the LEDs, and that uh, goes through that two-pin connector there. I just realized that these are switched, but whatever. You get the point. So then we've got two strings of seven LEDs each, and both of those are connected in parallel. And the way they're numbered here is exactly how it's uh, numbered on the, the actual board. So we've got a string that runs from DH to uh, D14 and one that runs from D7 to D1. So the pin that's doing the switching is this... Uh, number eight on my schematic here which is number seven on the actual uh, data sheet that goes through an inductor and that's what goes to the uh, negative side of the capacitor and that goes off to the leds now this little 2.2 nanofarad capacitor right here that's wired between the negative side of here going to the leds after the inductor and ground or negative here is not actually present on the uh, circuit diagram that, uh, for the example that they give in the in the document so I'm guessing maybe that's just uh, for a little bit of um, maybe like bypassing or something just to eliminate some like high frequency noise or something. That, that's my guess. I'm not entirely sure. So pin number six on the uh, document, if we look at it, it says CS. 
So that's for current sense, and that's what this resistor down here is going to be. So that's going to be a low value resistor. And as we can see on the actual board, they have two 3.16 ohm resistors in parallel. So that's basically going to be a total of uh, 1.58 ohms. So they're probably both doing that to get like an accurate value and also to sort of like distribute the uh, current capability. Because if you just did one of those little resistors at 1.58 ohms, it's probably going to draw too much current through it. and It's going to get like really hot and probably like prematurely burn out. If we look at the data sheet. And we look at the block diagram for that this IC. This is uh, the current sense pin right here. So that's what basically goes connected to ground through those uh, two resistors. And this here is the MOSFET that's doing the switching uh, for you know to to buck the output. We see here VCC goes uh, through here. There's a resistor here in line. It goes to the gate of this MOSFET. And that goes to the uh, the drain. That's the one that's being switched. And it goes to the that second inductor going to the LEDs. So it appears that as long as this chip has power, this MOSFET here is going to be on or conducting. And so as this one's switching, you know, it's allowing the current to go to the the D output. And I have a feeling that what fried inside of the the IC was probably maybe like this MOSFET here. And I'll kind of give my thoughts on why I think this might have fried. The only other two pins here that we haven't really talked about on the IC are, well, three, the four, but that's just ground. Two and three, number uh, pin number two, that's for the uh, timing resistor, and that's going to a 100K resistor. And then pin number three, that's a compensation uh, capacitor. And on the board here is a one microfarad uh, C5 and C4. Those are both uh, chip capacitors. But I was actually able to measure them in circuit because this one here, when I, I took the chip off to be able to see underneath it, uh, it goes connected to nothing after you remove that. So that was easy to measure. This one here, I just cut the trace and then I was able to measure it because like I said, it's not like I'm going to fix this thing anyway. Well, pin number three here says comp, uh, and like I said, it may be like a compensation capacitor, but it looks like it's just maybe for kind of uh, smoothing out the output from this uh, comparator or if it's like an op amp but yeah it's just like maybe for like filtering that line or something uh so if you go back to the schematic the capacitor that fried was this one right here and then we saw that these two resistors were like looking a little crispy <laughs> right so what i think happened was this capacitor here probably started getting leaky and it shorted for like a fraction of a second. And as I mentioned, it like flickered a couple times before it completely shut off. And then after that, it's when it started smoking. So I figured that it was leaky. It shorted. It, the short kind of, you know, like burnt out that little part that shorted. And after that, it just kind of like cascaded a bit more and it got worse. And then it completely shorted, fried these capacitors. And then maybe the chip here was trying like really hard to compensate for the sudden uh, drop in voltage between the rails that it fried the MOSFET and it just burned the crap out of that chip. And of course, this being shorted means that these two right here were going to just fry because now basically you got a dead short between these two because this is going to be a very low value resistance for the amount of voltage present on that line. So yeah, I have a feeling that that capacitor there going bad is what caused everything else to die. So pretty simple circuit overall. The chip here is the one that's doing like the bulk of the work and then you got to like a lot of like support stuff, you know, around it. All right, the people, I think that's going to do it for this one. As short as I try to keep it, as you can see, there's uh, quite a number of components that can be found inside of one of these uh, simple uh, LED uh, bulbs. So I hope that was at least uh, somewhat informative. Thank you guys for watching once again, and I'll see you guys around the bench. You guys want to see this light bulb spin?